Hey guys, and welcome back to Flatpak Effects, and thank you to Envato Elements for sponsoring this video. Now for this video, I'm gonna show you how to use Google Earth Studio to make these border animations. Now I got this idea direct from the Vox border series, where they had these animations kind of separating two countries. So over in Google Earth Studio, I've already just set up a quick composition here. Now if you're brand new to the program, then watch my video below, which is a beginner video, and I'll run you through how to set up and how to use Google Earth Studio and get to the window that I'm looking at. Now, once you're at this point, all you need to do is basically just find the part or the country that you want to use to basically draw your border. So that can be anywhere in the world. Now, for instance, just the example that I'm going to use here, I've just gone basically somewhere up here into the mountains. So once I've kind of found that part, what I want to do is I want to find a point somewhere in the middle here and I'm just going to create or set my camera tracker. Now what that does then is we don't want to touch the camera target or the camera rotation because that's only affecting these. I want to create a series of keyframes here for the camera position. Then when I go across in my timeline and I move this out, I can even zoom this in slightly, you'll notice it'll rotate around that point. So that's exactly what we want because we want it to stay on that same position. Now you can animate your camera however you like and if you want to do more detailed animations you can check out the videos in the description below which my other two videos on using Google Earth Studio and I dive a lot more into detail about how to actually animate a camera but for this we're just using a simple animation. All we then need to do is we need to make sure that that point is going to appear in our export. So if I just come up here and go to a view trackers, there's nothing there at the moment. If I just right click, I can go, I can create a point there, which is my tracker point. And you can even rename this to whatever you like. It doesn't really matter where that is, as long as it's somewhere on the screen, we can use that to track to basically our, our border animation. So once I've got all that, then I'm just gonna jump over here and hit render. Now on the render, very quickly, all I'm going to do is set my dimensions. You can set all of this up however you like. You need to make sure that this is set to After Effects.jsx because that's what we're going to use. And we're also going to use the global space coordinate. Then up here, you can choose where you want to save that animation and then you can just hit start. And then again, that's gonna render that all out as a JPEG sequence. So now over here in After Effects, what I can do is I can come up to File, down to Scripts, and I want to run that script file. Now I need to navigate to wherever I saved or I exported all that data. And you're gonna notice there's whatever the title of your video was called, and then you've got a .jsx. If I open that, after Effects is gonna do everything for us. It's gonna set up a composition. It's gonna have the tracker set up and even the text layer there as well. And then we can use this to basically create our animation. So you can see we've got it already animating. So what I want to do is basically create a new solid because I'm gonna create the line for the border animation. The solid doesn't matter what color it is. And I'm also gonna make that 3D. Now a quick way of lining it up with our scene is if I parent it to that tracker point, then go down to the properties here and just reset this, it's automatically going to be at that same position. And then I can just basically scale this right up so it covers or fills the entire screen. Now to that, I want to apply a stroke animation. So come up to effect, down to generate, and we're going to add the stroke effect. Now that's gonna appear over here. Now at the moment, it's not gonna be able to see anything because we haven't drawn a line over our mountain. So what I need to do is grab my pen tool with that layer selected. Now I can start to draw out my little animation here of where we want that line to kind of go. Just kind of drawing out a rough borderline here. And then we can basically come over here and start messing around with those settings. I'm just gonna make sure all mass is selected, scale this down and even scale up the hardness here. Now yours might look like this. It might go really fuzzy and that's because we need to turn up the quality. So you just need to basically rasterize that layer by hitting that. And now when we scale up, it's gonna be nice and clean. Now you can also add little dots if you want rather than a solid line, but that's entirely up to you. Now the best part is this is already tracked into our scene here. So it's done all of the heavy lifting as far as 
animating the position of that line. Now what I want to do to this, or what I saw in the Vox Border series, is they kind of added a bit of a glow, which looked kind of interesting. So all I need to do to this is if I just come up to Effect, down to Stylize, I'm just going to add the Glow Effect. Now the Glow Effect, what I can do is I can just basically create my own colors by using the A and B. And here I can just change this color to be whatever I like. So just for instance, I'm gonna change this to a blue color. And then I want to drag up on the glow intensity and maybe on the radius here. Maybe even go back to those stroke settings. You might need to adjust the actual width of that line. Might even just turn this off so we can see what we're doing. And you'll see that we're kind of creating this line effect here with this glow over the top. And it just kind of looks interesting. That's what Vox did in their border series. But you kind of create this nice little line effect like this. Now to animate the line is super simple. All I have to do is basically just create an end keyframe here, drag all that way back to zero, and then just go along on my timeline, drag that up it's automatically going to create that animation of the line over our mountain path. Now over here in my original composition, what I did was I created this little pop-up here. Now the way I created this little pop-up was super simple. I just went on to Envato Elements, who were the sponsor of today's video, and just downloaded one of the many different title templates that they have. Now what I actually found is when I was watching the original Vox Border series, they had their own style of different titles that kind of pop up to, you know, signify different landmarks on the ground. So all I had to do is just go on to Envato Elements and just search for titles. And there's literally thousands of titles that I can download. Now the ones that I ended up using for this is just this little pack here, which is basically just a, a location lower third titles. Now the best part is you can download any number of these unlimited amount of times, and it's all included in a really low monthly subscription. And once I've got that, all I have to do is basically just come up here and import a new file. And all you have to do is just find the project file of the download that you just did, and then import it straight into your After Effects project. Now, once you've done that, you end up with all of the pre-animated location titles that you can just drag straight into your composition. So for instance here, I just grabbed this location title number nine and just dragged it straight into my composition here. And then I just made it 3D. I did the same thing again by parenting it to my track layer, and then I just hit reset. Then I can just simply animate this however I like, and then it's just a matter of repositioning it here on screen. I can even change the text and do whatever I like. But again, you might wanna use one of the thousands of different titles that comes with an Envato Elements subscription. Now, if you're interested in trying Envato Elements for yourself, then you can get 50% off an annual subscription by using the link in the description below. But the other little thing that I did in my original composition here was I added a little bit of depth of field. Now, one limitation I found with using an image sequence is that you can't make it 3D, right? Because it's not actually a 3D layer. So if I turn depth of field on on the camera, it's not really going to work the way we want it to. So what I do is if I just right click create a new adjustment layer, you can basically fake this by just drawing out a rough mask here, which kind of goes on over the area that you want to stay in focus. And then just coming up to effect down to blur and adding a Gaussian blur and then just scaling this up. Now what I want to do is if I come down to that mask setting and just invert that, then I can also come down here and just add a very slight feather and then just control the amount of that mask and then slightly adjust the amount of blur as well on the outside. And you can see that if I just show you before and after, we pretty much have depth of field. If I just make sure my location title is above that, it's all gonna stay nice and sharp. Now you might need to also animate that mask as the camera moves, but because you're not doing very complex movements, it's very easy just to animate that mask and move it so that that part of your animation stays within focus. So that's all the steps that I took in order to create this animation. Now in this case, I've used some mountains to kind of show you how you can make that line go over the top of mountains. 
but you don't have to do that in the Vox border series. They actually just use this on flat uh, area maps. So using the exact same steps, but just using a different map, I've created this same animation on a flatter surface here and just kind of drawn out the border lines. Now, again, you can animate and adjust however you want all of those different lines. So if you want to slow down or speed up that animation, just go through and mess around with the timing on those layers, drag this in and out. But that's essentially how you create this effect and how easy it is using Envato Elements titles just to add that little bit of extra stuff to your work and make the end video much more interesting. So that's it for this video. Now, if you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. You can also check out more videos over here on the side of screen. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.